Good, hello, feature nuggets. If you keep up with these, there's been a couple of more uh, animation theory type ones recently. Uh, it's time to do a few more just strictly Toon Boom software based ones, but still based on the theme of the Onion Skin tool and how its deeper features can affect your workflow. We've done the basics. Now I'll show you some of the more hidden stuff. First is a new addition to Harmony 16 called the Advanced Onion Skin. Holding down on the button itself, you'll see a new option saying show Advanced Onion Skin. Turning that on will change the brackets to something that you can't touch or control. Oh, what's up with that? Well, going to Windows, there is a new Onion Skin window that you can activate and it looks like this. Similar to the top light that was mentioned a couple of videos ago, uh, this is kind of similar, only now, rather than controlling the opacity of the entire thing, you have independent control over every individual frame. By default, it's like this, where they're all sort of linked together, so you can control how much fade out and fade in there is over time. But if you go to this drop down menu, you can uncheck link sliders and then have independent control over every individual one. So for instance, you might want to fade out some frames that are right near the start and then fade in maybe a keyframe that happened a few frames ago. You can have even more control than this by unchecking certain frames completely. And then you can have a good look out into the distance without being overwhelmed by the, <laughs> the complete madness that can be having a, a trailing onion skin going just, just everywhere. The advanced onion skin also offers shortcuts to some of the customization controls. First, of course, is the, is the color swatches. They are here and ready, so you can change them to whatever you want. If red and green do not take your fancy. And if things are getting a little bit too complicated to look at, if it's all just one big mash of color, Color, you can change it to original colors here. So, it, you know, theoretically, if this was a colored image, then, you know, I, I would be seeing all the colors of the fills. This is great. Having it in a pull down menu previously was only available in preferences. So it was like changing like a fundamental option. You know, normally a preference is something you change once and then just leave it forever. But uh, changing between colored and original colors for the onion skin feels like it should be a switch. I wouldn't mind having that assigned to a hotkey, you know? It should also be mentioned that if I switch back to the regular onion skin again, although what's appeared here has become grayed out, these drop down options are still applicable, meaning I can switch between colored, original colors from here as well. Even the top light shortcut, being able to fade out everything at once, can still be accessed. Colored outline is, uh, takes that a step further. You'll notice it retains the red and green, only now uh, the image itself is sort of invisible. So I'll demonstrate this a bit more here. Like if I do a bit a larger blob and I do a, a pencil stroke next to it, you'll see the next frame later, it's showing me the vector stroke information, the outlines of fills and the skeletal structure of a stroke. This is a huge deal and will fundamentally change uh, onion skinning your shading. This, I don't even know if it was in the, um, like the previous version at all. I'll, I'll have to have a look and get back to you on that. At least I've never used it before. Having it here as a quick option is great. I, and, and, and again, in my opinion, having it as a drop down menu is still one step too far away. It really should be uh, buttons, not just here, but like available on the timeline uh, or even short cuttable. I, I would be on this just always. There are more options that go deeper. Next, we've got uh, apply color wash. This sort of brightens everything up a bit. Should help it stand out from the rest of the crowd. I should also point out this time that the onion skin opacity and the top light, if I move that, it's moving the central column at the same time. They are literally the same feature connected. So control them all at once with that middle one. Lastly, you may have noticed this box here. This is a drop down to switch between by frames to by drawings. Those with Toon Boom experience will know what that means. But those who are fairly new, uh, this is quite a large shift. Drawings are of course what gets stored here in the library. So the order that you draw your frames in, that's the order that this displays it. It's not necessarily by timeline. You can onion skin by your archive of hand or mouth positions, which is pretty cool. You'll be able to summon them up and see what they look like without actually bringing them onto the stage. Should be quite handy for things like a not quite so open mouth. There is a lot more still to talk about, including how this all does work when you're shading and you get just tons of color everywhere. There's a bunch of different techniques to work around it. And also what these are, hmm, these may change your world. So stick around for the next few uh, Toon Boom onion skin themed nuggets. We'll get right into them. Thanks for checking out this nugget. Have a look through the playlist for tons of other short bits and boops to help with animation and software. You might stumble across a hidden technique that will change your world or solve a specific problem. Leave suggestions and questions in the comments if you'd like a nugget on anything in particular. Thanks again, and don't forget your keys, wallet, and phone.